Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I've been working with Chief Theory Games to create a gear lock guide for every gear lock in Too Many Bones. They all work a little bit differently, they all deserve a little bit of special attention, and the gear lock that we're covering first is Patches. Patches is a healer who has some serious power to do harm, so he's able to heal, but he can also deal out poison damage, he can give buffs to himself and to others, but sometimes his buffs have negative consequences. He is considered an easier character for both co-op and solo, so he's considered very low difficulty in co-op and quite reasonable in solo, and that makes him a really good starting choice if you are new to Too Many Bones, or if you just like patches, which I do. So to get ready for a game of Too Many Bones, you need all of your gear lock stuff. So in this case, we have Patch's gear lock reference sheet, his dice, his mat, and his chip. I've also just put a battle mat with a basic enemy here so that if I want to illustrate something, I have the option. When it comes to setup, Patches is very simple. He does not start with any skill dice on his character mat. Some gear locks do, but Patches does not. Patches has three professions that we're going to talk about, as well as consumables that he can use. And we're going to go through each of these things in detail. But first, I want to talk about Patches' innate abilities and fighting style. So if you look in the top left corner of any gear lock mat, you're going to find out whether they are a melee, ranged, or mixed fighter. And you're also going to find out what their innate and innate plus one abilities are called. Patches has the innate ability to gain one HP at the start of each turn in battle, which is really cool. Let's say that Patches has gotten into it with this troll youngin over here, and that the troll youngin has hit him for one. At the beginning of Patches' next turn, because of his innate ability, he gets to automatically heal that one chip back, which means that Patches is basically always on the comeback thanks to that ability. If Patches can get up to six bones in his backup plan during a battle, he can spend them all to upgrade to his innate plus one ability. And that one is called Major Recovery. When that happens, a few things will change. First, Patches will be flipped over to the side of his chip that has stars around it to show he's on an 8 plus 1. And after that, he's going to get to have one permanent increase to his health stat. And this only happens at the moment of upgrade to an 8 plus 1. So he would get an extra health just for that without having to spend a training point. And also from that point on, at the start of his turn in battle, he can heal any gear lock anywhere on the mat, not just himself. So if we were playing a co-op game, at the beginning of the turn, Patches could choose to use his innate healing ability on himself, or he could use it on somebody else. So Patches' innate abilities alone are pretty cool, but let's have a look at his professions and talk through the options. We're just going to go in order top to bottom when talking through Patch's professions. This order is also going to mirror what's on his gear lock reference sheet. So if you want to pull out the reference sheet and kind of read along while I talk through, then that's an awesome idea and you should go do that. But if you just want to cruise along and watch, that's also totally fine. Patch's first profession is combat medic. And I highly recommend that you train his first skill in this profession as early in the game as possible. The starting skill, which is denoted by a star, and it's the prereq for everything else in this profession, is med kit. It's in slot number one on the mat, and it's also die number one among his skill dice as denoted by the one in the top left corner. Med kit is a great die because even though Patches is a melee attacker, when he uses this die, he can heal any gear lock on the mat anywhere, whether they're adjacent to him or not, for the amount of HP on the die face. The numbers range from one to three. If you roll a one and you don't really like it and you're not desperate, you might actually choose not to use this die right away and roll it again on a future turn in order to get one of the better results. So medkit is a great die just for some general healing and also because it opens the rest of this combat medic skill tree for you. The second skill in combat medic is called fast hands. And while fast hands isn't a die that does anything by itself, it works in concert with medkit to give a multiplier to the healing that you roll. So if I rolled medkit and I also rolled fast hands, I get to take the result on my medkit die and multiply it by two or by three if I got really lucky. There's also a bonus phase because not every roll can be successful. Anyway, what's particularly neat about fast hands is that it can be used in two ways. You can use it immediately. So I roll a medkit for immediate use and roll fast hands with it and just use both of those dice right away to heal someone. Or I have the option of rolling fast hands and putting it in a locked slot. And what that would mean is that the next time I rolled med kit or med pack, which we'll get to, and I wanted a multiplier, I could pull this die from my lock slot and use it then. So you can't roll fast hands by itself and get an immediate effect on your battle, but it does amazing things for you in conjunction with other dice. Then we have a little bit of a branching pathway. You can continue straight along to bone saw, 
or you can come down to MedPack. Let's go ahead and talk about Bone Saw first. Bone Saw is relatively straightforward. You just use it to make an extra attack on your target. So this is a melee die that Patches will use alongside his regular attack dice. What makes this one really cool though, is that while you can get a result of one, there are actually no bones on this die. None of the faces are bones. So no matter what, you know you're at least gonna do some kind of damage. So this is a great die to have if you just need to hack away with your bone saw. If you come down here, you can train a die called Med Pack. Note that Med Pack is technically die number seven in Patches set. So the slots for dice go in numerical order, which profession dice follow these lines. So you may have a slot that's connected to a die up here, but the number is based on its position on the row beneath. So in this case, die number seven is our Med Pack. A Med Pack is like Med Kit, but better. While the med kit results range from one to three, the med pack ranges from three to five. And again, this is healing for any gear lock anywhere on the battle mat. And even better, this can be used in conjunction with fast hands. So you can still get a chunky multiplier on this chunkier healing die. So once Patches starts to level up within his combat medic profession, he gets extremely powerful when it comes to healing and he can bail people out of some pretty rough scrapes. The final skill in Patch's combat medic profession is Zap Pack. And Zap Pack is interesting because it's the perfect reflection of the fact that Patches is a doctor who hurts people. Sometimes the Zap Pack does good, and sometimes it does damage. Two of the Zap Pack die faces cause what is called a Negi Zap. In other words, a negative impact on an enemy. Again, while Patches is a melee attacker, this can zap any enemy anywhere on the battle map for three or four. The rest of the die faces, however, cause what is called a posi zap. A posi zap helps people, more specifically, it helps gear locks that have been KO'd. So if you are in battle with someone who's just knocked out, you can essentially go clear and use the posi zap die to jolt them back to life. For example, let's say that our buddy Pickett is in this battle with us, but he's been KO'd and he's been knocked off of the mat. If I manage to roll a successful zap pack pause zap, then I can get Pickett back in the game and I can restore him to the number of HP that I rolled on this die. So in this case, it would be three, but there are actually higher results. So Pickett would get to come in for the next round with three HP back with him. There is one trick to using a zap pack, however. You can't just roll this die willy-nilly. You actually need something to power it. It is, after all, an electrical charge. It needs a battery. So the Zap Pack die doesn't work by itself. It works in conjunction with one of Patch's consumables, and those are E-cells. E-cells are basically batteries that you can pick up throughout the course of a game, and then you can use them to charge two of the different skills on Patch's mat. One is Zap Pack, which we just talked about. The other is Overcharge, which is in Patch's backup plan, and we'll get to it closer to the end of the video. But do remember, if you're gonna do something electrical, you need batteries, and those come from your E-cells. Patch's second profession is also his smallest. It's called Forester and it has two skills, nutrients and toxins. As you can see, there's a star on both of these, which means that you can choose to train one or both and you can start with either one you want. Patch's nutrients die is like a grab bag of good stuff. Some of the faces just allow you to heal, similar to your med kit or your med pack. Some faces allow you to reroll a healed die for the number of times specified on the die face. So if I'm looking for a specific result, I can get two rerolls off of this die face. One of the die face on nutrients gives you a loot draw, which is pretty cool. Or you can get a double bones die, which just accelerates the progress of your backup plan. So nutrients is one of those dice that you train and then you just roll it periodically to see what kind of good thing could happen. I confess that in this particular profession, toxins is my favorite. Patches may be a good doctor who has good medicine, but he also knows how to make poisons and slather them all over baddies on the battle mat, which is fantastic. The toxins die allows you to roll to see if you can apply poison damage to a baddie that you are targeting. Because Patches is melee, that means that he will have to target a baddie who's adjacent to him. So with this one, imagine that he is just kind of slathering poison all over the baddie next to him and then it just has lingering effects for the next couple turns. Being able to do poison damage is significant, especially because a lot of baddies have special abilities that make it hard to damage in the normal way. So being able to poison someone makes Patches an exceptionally useful gear lock in the party. He could roll bones, but let's just pretend it's poison all the way down. When you place a poison effect on a baddie, just like with a gear lock, they get a poison effect die that ticks down each turn until the counter reaches zero, and it does damage in the meantime. Now let's talk about Patch's third profession, which is Stim Stacker. This particular profession is interesting because it has a lot of dice that are high risk, 
but also high reward. So you're gonna have to decide how you want to play patches. You won't be able to get every single skill die every single game. So you may wanna go for something more traditional like combat medic, or you may wanna progress further with something like stim stacker which again is risky, but quite fun. Up until now, we've thought about Patch's healing abilities as healing true HP. So if Patches himself is hurt on the battle mats, then he can heal HP to replace what he has lost. However, his stims do something a little bit different. The first die in this profession is Stim Kit, and Stim Kit's primary ability is that it adds buff HP. There are differing amounts on the die, or you can roll a bone, so you'll just have to see what you get. Buff HP does not go directly on your gear lock. It actually goes in your prep area. So if we rolled stim kit and we got three buff HP, then those buff HP would come here and you would essentially run through these HP before actually damaging Patches himself in battle. So having buff HP is like having just a little buffer for enemies to run through before they start to hurt you for real. A major difference, however, is that if someone does true damage to you, it's gonna do damage to your actual chip count on your gear lock as opposed to damage to the buff HP over in the prep area. The thing about such a cool stimulant, however, is that drugs are dangerous, kids. So even though this diet generally does good things or just rolls you a bone, that's not guaranteed. Patches runs a risk every time he uses something from his stim stacker profession because there's also die faces that do true damage to him in the amount that's specified on the die face. So unless Patches has the capacity to reroll this, if he rolls this symbol, then he has to do damage to himself and the die exhausts, and his attempt to use a stim backfired. So the stim kit brings cool things, but there are also potential consequences. Before we move on, there's one other thing I want to tell you about Patch's buff HP, and that's that it's connected to the stim die that you rolled to get. So if you look at your reference sheet, stim kit is actually an active die. So when you roll it and you get your buff HP, you put it in an active die slot. Once the die is in the active slot, there are two ways to make it leave that slot and exhaust it during battle. One is for the gear lock to lose all of their buff HP. So if Patches runs out of buff HP, this die is going to exhaust and be removed from the battle. There are also some enemy abilities that cause you to lose dice in an active slot. So if, for example, you're up against an enemy that has the mischief ability, they can cause you to lose this die. If you lose it, it is connected to these buff HP. So if you lose the die, you also lose the buff HP. And what's even more brutal about that is that uh, if you lose an active die that causes you to lose buff HP, you actually lose all of the buff HP in your prep area, not just the HP that was marked by the die. So as you play it, remember that there's an inherent connection between your buff HP chips and the die that you used to generate them. This particular profession branches in a couple of different directions. So let's talk about Kim Kit first really quick. Kim Kit is very much like Stim Kit, except instead of getting you buff HP, the Chem Kit gives you buff attack. This means that you have the ability to roll attack dice that total your actual attack stat plus the buff on this die for the remainder of battle, which is pretty great. However, you won't always be successful. And once again, Patches can definitely injure himself while trying to grant this buff. Just like Patches healing dice, these buffs can be granted to any gear lock anywhere on the battle mat. So Patches can do this for himself, or he can do this for an ally, even if they are not adjacent. If we progress this way in the profession, Patches can get the stim belt. And the stim belt is basically the same thing as the stim kit, except that it has better stats. So while the stim kit can give you somewhere between two and five buff HP, the stim belt gives you between three and five, so you know you're gonna get a little bit more buff. At the same time though, as nice as this die face is, you're always running the risk of rolling this one for more true damage to patches. So you might be wondering, is there anything I can do to mitigate a bad roll when I roll these dice? I don't want patches to keep getting hurt and I'm an unlucky roller. Well, if you wanna train the distiller skill die, what that allows you to do is actually re-roll stim dice. On a successful roll, the distiller will give you the power to re-roll one of your stim dice the number of times it's printed on the die face, so you can keep hunting for that desired result. In this direction, in the stim stacker profession, we have chain reactor. And what makes the chain reactor die really interesting is that it has very good rewards. So this one is a regenerate HP at the beginning of every turn result. So just like patches in 8 plus 1, this die will allow patches or another gear lock of his choice to regenerate one HP at the start of every turn of battle for the duration of battle. This die result does the same thing. It regenerates HP, but instead of regenerating your true HP, it regenerates your buff HP. So either way, something nice comes of this die. 
Chain Ranker doesn't have the power to hurt patches when he rolls it, although there are of course bones results because not every die result can be successful. And then our final trainable profession skill is Stim Lethal. And this one is interesting because it doesn't necessarily do anything in battle and it's kind of high risk, but at the same time, the reward is truly excellent. When Patches rolls Stim Lethal, he can do up to two true damage to himself on a particularly bad roll. However, the die faces with good results have really good results. What this symbol means is that a gear lock of Patch's choice is able to permanently increase their HP stat by one. Not just for the battle, but for the rest of the entire game. So basically what this die lets you do is increase your health stat without having to put any training points into it. That's amazing. But again, with great reward comes great risk. So we have covered all of Patch's actual skill dice that he can train using training points. Now we're going to cover Patch's consumables. You cannot spend training points to get consumables, which means that you're going to have to acquire them in another way throughout your game of Too Many Bones. Patch's primary ways of obtaining consumables are either through loot, so there are loot cards that will let you choose a consumable based on which gear lock is using a loot. And Patches also has Fortunate Discovery in his backup plan, which means that he can acquire enough bones to spend them and then get a consumable of his choice. Patches has three consumables and they're all worth your attention but some are a little easier to use than others. Patch's first consumable is called Liquid Life. And this thing is absolutely amazing. While most of Patch's abilities are geared towards healing an injured Gearlock who is still awake, the Liquid Life consumable enables you to revive a Gearlock who has been knocked out. You can either use this immediately or you can put it in an active slot so that somebody who's KO'd will auto revive. And they will essentially come back to life with the amount of health specified on the die face. Liquid Life is a particularly cool consumable because it also offers Patches the ability to revive himself. If you're playing solo, this is especially important because something like the Zap Pack is not gonna revive Patches because in order to use it on himself, he would have to be conscious. If he's KO'd, he can't use it. But if you decide to roll Liquid Life during a battle and put it in an active slot, what that means is that if Patches gets knocked out during his battle, he can actually auto revive himself because he's got the liquid life to spend from that active spot. And he'll just come back with three HP or whatever the die face happened to say. So liquid life makes for some really great life insurance, so to speak, especially if you're playing solo and there's no one else who can help you if you get KO'd. Patch's next consumable is poison dart. So most of Patch's attacks are melee attacks and that includes toxins, which is his other way of dealing out poison. However, if you pick up the Poison Dart consumable, Patches can target any enemy anywhere on the board, throw this, and just stick them for some poison damage, as much as is specified on the die face. So if you want to do some poison damage and you don't want to get super close, then this consumable is definitely your friend. And Patches' last consumable is called E-Cells. E-Cells doesn't do anything in itself, but it is used to power both the Zap Pack and the overcharge skill in Patch's backup plan. After you roll E-Cells, it essentially becomes a counter that you tick down every time you use one of the batteries that was available on the die. So if I started with three E-Cells and then used Zap Pack, I would tick the die down to two. So E-Cells can't be used on its own, but it's used to charge other skills and it serves as a counter so that you know how many of those charges are left. So those are all of Patch's skill dice, but there's still a few things to know about him. Let's cover his backup plan really quick. Every gear lock has a different backup plan, but they're all structured in roughly the same way. In Patch's case, having one die in his backup plan doesn't do anything for him. Once he hits two, he can spin those two dice to heal any gear lock for one. If he has three bones and he wants to spin them off from his backup plan, he can do a needle jab, which lets him stick his target for two damage. So if you're already engaged with an enemy and you want to poke him for a little bit of extra, this is your friend. Four bones will let you perform a fortunate discovery, which lets Patches get a consumable of his choice. And then overcharge is amazing if you happen to have E-cells. You can spin one to power this overcharge backup plan, and this will allow you to electrify any baddie on the board for four true damage. So if Patches has saved up five bones over the course of a battle, he could choose to spend all of these and take them out of the backup plan to do four true damage to this troll youngin, which would be enough to just kill it outright. So it's a very powerful attack, especially because again, it is true damage. So if you're dealing with an enemy who's difficult to hit the normal way, then being able to do some true damage is very helpful. And of course, if during a battle Patches holds out all the way until he has a sixth bone, he can expend all of them to pick up his innate plus one. So that is a rundown of pretty much everything you need to know about Patches to get ready to play him. 
However, as you can tell, Patches offers a lot of options. So let's take a quick look at this beginner build strat in case you've never played him before and you want some initial guidance. Every year lock will have a beginner build strat on the back of their reference sheet and Patches is no different. You're gonna get two sets of advice, one for your stats and one for your skills. You have to put training points into both to have a fully well-rounded gear lock. When it comes to stats, the official recommendation is that you give Patches another dex and another attack die as your first priorities, and then it'll tell you where to go from there, typically increasing your HP, and then going back for some more attack or defense. As for skills, the official recommendation is to start with the med kit, and then you can pick up either nutrients or toxins as a second skill. Nutrients to give yourself some boosts, toxins to help you do some damage. As the strategy advice will tell you, when you are dealing with particularly tough baddies, your stim line is amazing. However, it comes with some inherent risks because as you know, Patches can end up damaging himself. So if you wanna take a safer path, the medic skills are the way to go. Overall though, Patches is a great choice no matter how you play him. He's a good all around character who's able to heal, but he also has the capacity to do harm in some pretty interesting ways. He mostly does melee attacking, but he does have some ranged abilities such as his poison darts. And he's also very handy because he's able to revive fallen gear locks in multiple ways. And he's even, with the help of Liquid Life, able to revive himself if he plans it correctly. This makes him a really flexible character who's really satisfying to play. He's particularly good for beginners, but I think that he has enduring value even for better and too many bones players. And that, everyone, is an overview of Patches. Hopefully you feel much more familiar with him now and maybe ready to try him out in your game of Too Many Bones. Stay tuned for the next gear lock guide, which will take you through everything you need to know about another gear lock from the world of Too Many Bones. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.